Here we are on page 13, number 7 through 12. Number 7, y equals 4 parentheses x plus 5 squared minus 17. This again looks like x squared has been shifted and moved and translated, so I'm going to do the graph of it first. So here we have x squared, and it got moved that way 5, uh, times 4 times as tall, so it's very narrow and then went down 17. So it'll be back here at negative 5, 17, and very, very tall. I don't know what the y-intercept will be yet. I may have to adjust that later, but let's look. The y-intercept happens when x is 0. So we get 4 times 5 squared, 5 squared is 25, times 4 is 100, minus 17 is 83. Whoa, yeah, that's going to be up there quite a ways, 0, 83. The x-intercepts will happen where 0 goes in for y. So we have 0 equals 4x plus 5 squared minus 17. Add the 17 over, divide by 4, that's going to equal x plus 5 squared, square root both sides, square root, square root, plus or minus, and we get uh, plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2, and then subtract 5 from both sides, and that's where we get our x's. So we get negative 5 plus the square root of 17 over 2, and negative 5 minus the square root of 17 over 2, 0. And you can check that out, punch that in your calculators to get these two things. But what is clear is we're going to have to right here in the middle of that is the negative 5. Negative 5 plus the square root of 17 over 2, whatever that decimal turns out to be, and negative 5 minus the square root of 17 over 2. Negative 5 is the center of that. So the vertex indeed is negative 5 and then 17. All right, let's check that out on the calculator. 4x plus 5 squared minus 17. Let's see what the graph of this thing looks like. Oh, yep, and it's off the screen as we're down here to negative 17, and the screen can only see a 10. There we go. Number 8. Let's do this one. We have f of x equals negative 2x plus 5 altogether squared minus 4. Very similar to what we had over here. So we'll do the graph of this one first. And here we have x squared, and it is going to be moved that way 5. It's going to be moved down 4. And then this guy right here is going to flip it and uh, make it 2 times as tall. So before we move it down 4, so it's going to go over 5 and look about like this. And then it's going to flip over and make it twice as tall. Let's do that in the red. So it'll go look about like this. And then down 4. So that should give us right about there. It should look about like that. So when we get the y-intercept, that means we stick in 0 for x. 25. Mm, times a negative 2 is a negative 50, minus 4 is a negative 54. So that won't hit down here until negative 54. The x-intercepts. Now, if looking at the graph, I'm assuming we're going to get imaginary ones, but let's try it. 0 in for y. We get 0 equals negative 2x plus 5 squared minus 4. Add 4 over. Divide by a negative 2 x plus 5 squared. Um, that's a negative 2 equals x plus 5 squared. When we square root, square root, plus or minus, you'll notice that's where we come up with imaginary numbers. And so subtract 5 from both sides. So, x-intercepts. There are no x-intercepts because we have imaginary zeros. But it'll look about like that. Let's double check it on our calculator. Let's double check it on our calculator. 
negative 2 x plus 5 squared minus 4 graph it and there we have it right there number 9 f of x equals negative 3 fifths uh, x plus 2 squared plus 7 hmm interesting what this one will look like with that negative 3 fifths there again it, it, this is in that form where we have the vertex right there so it's going to be the normal x squared right there and it's going to be slid that way too right negative 2 then it will be flipped over okay so I'm going to draw a little flip there and 3 fifths is tall and then it will go up 7 so it goes this way too looks like this it's going to be flipped over and be a little bit wider because everything got shorter and then up 7 so it should be negative 2 7 and something like that with of course a little rounded edge there and the vertex is going to be negative 2 7 so let's get the y-intercept that's the nice one stick in 0 for x and we get 0 plus 2 is 4 is 2 squared is 4 times a negative 3 fifths is a negative 12 fifths plus 7 which is 35 fifths negative 12 fifths plus 35 fifths is a negative 23 fifths oh is a positive 23 fifths excuse me 23 fifths so that's going to be our our intercept right there and then let's look at our x-intercepts it looks like we'll have a positive one and a negative one 0 for y so you put 0 in for f of x and we get negative 3 fifths x plus 2 squared plus 7 subtract 7 from both sides times by a negative 5 thirds so we get 35 thirds square root both sides square root both sides plus or minus and then subtract 2 over so we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 35 over 3 if we simplify that let's do that right here times by the square root of 3 times by the square root of 3 we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 105 over 3 so this will be negative 2 plus the square root of 105 over 3 and negative 2 minus the square root of 5 1 over 3 you'll see negative 2 is right there in the middle let's double check it on the calculator here we have negative 3 fifths x plus 2 quantity squared plus 7 let's graph it and see where that thing is and there we have it Ooh, a little bit skiwampus, but yes, that's exactly right. And you could find the maximum would be at negative 2, 7. Something I wanted to show you earlier, if you'd like to see if you have either a vertex or something that comes out nice, you can see that by the table. And you'll see here we can go up the table to negative 2, and you'll see there's our highest value of 7 that pops out. This is an XY table just like we made for the lines and stuff like that. You can kind of see where it goes and the, the highest value is indeed 7. Number 10, y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. Ooh, this one doesn't look like it's gonna factor really easily and we've got a leading coefficient that's not 1 here. Hmm, with this one we could use the quadratic formula to get the intercepts or we could turn it into this form. I'm gonna choose to turn it into this form just because it, we'll see where it goes. We'll do some other ones with the quadratic formula in a bit. So here, I'm going to take this guy and write it like this. y equals 2 uh, x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave a little space there. I'm going to add the 14 out here. Now, if I want to make this a perfect square, I take and half of that squared is going to be plus 9. Negative 3 squared is plus 9. Now notice I actually added 18 to this side, so I have to add 18 to the other side. 
I didn't just add a 9, I added 2 times 9. So now I have y equals 2, x minus 3 squared, and then I'm going to take this 18 and move it over here. So I have a plus 14, and then I'm subtracting that 18 off. So we get y equals 2, x minus 3 squared, minus 4. And you'll notice we've just turned it into that form by completing the square. Very handy to complete the square. We don't have a zero over here to keep that there, so when we balance it on the other side, we just get y by itself. And we now have, we know that the vertex is 3, negative 4. Uh, the y-intercept we can get the same way. 0 minus 3 is a negative 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, minus 4 is 14. So 0, 14, wow, this is going to be a pretty steep thing. So it's going to come down like that and up. And so the x-intercepts we'll get by placing a 0 here. So let's try that. Let's put a 0 for the y. Let's write this down, y-intercept. The x-intercept we'll get by Putting 0 in for y, 0 equals 2, x minus 3 squared minus 4, add 4 over, divide by 2, and we will get 2 equals x minus 3 squared, square root, square root, plus or minus, and then add 3 over, and we get 3 plus or minus the square root of 2 equals x. So that means these two points right here are 3 plus the square root of 2, 0, and 3 minus the square root of 2, 0. And you can actually check that, stick that in. That'll do it. Let's double check on our calculator. 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. Now, you should, we were graphing this thing back in the original. We could type it in in this form as well. It should come out exactly the same. This would have been easier to get the y-intercept. You'll notice we got 14 out. We could have just done 0 minus 0 plus 14, it would have been easier. Let's graph that. And there's our parabola right there. Up there, intercept 0, 14, those are two intercepts, and 3 is right in the middle of the intercepts and is where the vertex is.